Hi, welcome back kiddos. Well, you just saw a video where I showed you or refreshed your memory on how to calculate the weighted average atomic mass of isotopes. So uh, another thing or some terms I guess that you'll be using quite a bit in AP chemistry and IB chemistry is the twin concepts of claims and evidence. So we make a claim that say for titanium there are five different isotopes. How do we get evidence that supports that claim? Or upon which evidence was that claim made? Well, one of the ways we can do this is by using mass spectroscopy. Now, mass spectroscopy, sorry, mass spectroscopy is a technique that has a broader usage than just talking about isotopes. We're going to focus primarily right now on isotopes. If you're in IB chemistry, you will expand upon this discussion. Now, you need to understand the application of mass spectroscopy when it's appropriate, and you need to understand how to interpret mass spectra. I'm going to go over the equipment very quickly, primarily to show you I think it'll help you understand the spectra if we go through the equipment very quickly. You don't have to memorize this. This should not be tested. Now, in a mass spectrometer, one of the first things you do is you vaporize the sample. So we need to be able to get it in the gas phase. And you would be surprised what substances in a laboratory in special equipment uh, scientists can get into the gas phase. For example, metals like titanium. So you vaporize the, the sample. And the next step is to ionize the sample. So once you have a vaporized gas, you're going to bombard it with electrons to form ions. Now, we're going to focus, the technique typically focuses on cations, not exclusively though. And most of them will be plus one cations. Now, that means that if you had a mixture of samples, a whole bunch of them will be plus one. So how do we get to differentiate amongst all of those plus one ions? Well, we do that by first accelerating it through some charged plates. And then here's the key. We have a tunable magnetic field. And that magnetic field is going to select species of varying mass to charge ratios. You'll see that is either M slash E or M slash Z. I, I wish it weren't so, but that's the reality of what it is. And by tuning it, you can tune it to select a particular mass to charge ratio to hit the detector. And then all other mass to charge ratios would be deflected and would not reach the detector. And then we would tune it to detect the desired mass to charge ratio of our ions. So that's the gist of it. The goal is to form ions and then select ions of a particular mass to charge ratio. Then what we can do is graph that. Uh, we can get a variety of spectra. I want you to understand the terminology here. I think some people kind of mess up on that. And spectra with an A is plural. A spectrum is singular. So this is showing a spectrum. It, they're fairly easy to understand and to interpret. The, my main caution for you is this. I've seen spectra that have relative abundance, which means that we set the most abundant isotope, or the, the instrument sets the most abundant isotope at 100%. So everything is relative to that one isotope. Now, that will require some calculations. I've seen others where you can simply read the percent abundance right off of the graph. So read it very carefully. Sometimes it will show the actual percentage. Man, easy enough. Just read it off the y-axis. 
Now, the key to interpreting these spectra is to take a look at that y-axis. You notice here it says relative abundance. Now, you can also see that one of the isotopes hits 100. So that means that we are taking a part, remember whenever you're doing a percent, you're taking a part over a whole times 100. Well, in this spectrum, because one of them reaches 100, that whole has to be greater than 100. That means you're going to have to do some algebra. Now, if these were all much or less than 100, you can often read directly off that y-axis. Just be a little careful. And personally, I would always go ahead and add up all of these relative percent abundance so I know, you know, what the part over the whole that I'm talking about is. So let's take a look at this. If we add these up, I get 135.6 as my total. So I'm just going to do a couple of examples of these. That would mean I have 11.2 instead of being out of 100, it's actually out of 135.6. When I report percent abundances in order to get that weighted average that is the atomic mass, I want that to be a part out of 100. So you can set this up as a proportionality or just find the percentage. All right, so I get that. And in this case, I get 8.16%. I think the actual is actually closer to 8.26, but this is an experiment, remember? So there's always some degree of experimental error. So this 100, I get 100 over 135.6 is equal to x over 100. And this one, I get 73.7% abundant. So it hopefully will make sense to you um, what the, the actual atomic mass values are for um, titanium. So that gives you a couple of the examples. It is critical that you learn to interpret data, and in this case, a spectrum to get value. But I would also expect you to be able to go from that sort of data and make a graph, some sort. And, and they're not typically a bar graph like this. I know I've kind of simplified. You'll often see them as line graphs just to make them a little easier. Typically, they're actually going to have some sort of width as if it's a peak. But somehow, I want you to be able to represent the data. That's an important skill in science is representing data. So we'll be doing some of that in class. Until then, this is signing off.